Are the Steelers closer to underrated or overrated? Overrated. I think it's one of the worst, if not the worst, offseason I've seen in modern history from a team. It's obvious to me that Big Ben is the problem. This offseason sounds like someone who is really trying to deal with the symptoms and not the illness. But then what about the idea that maybe the chemistry won't be any better because Roethlisberger is still there? Oh, because he led the league in passing. How dare you criticize Ben Roethlisberger? Easy. I do it all the time. That's what I'm here for. I think Big Ben is at the heart of Pittsburgh problems. He's not a good leader, and they're putting too much of a burden on him. Last year's offseason was probably one of the most challenging offseasons that we've had in our marriage. I'd lie if I said it didn't bother me. It's definitely hurtful when your character, your integrity, things are challenged and, and talked about, especially when you um, you know better. You know, personally, there were definitely disappointments. You know, professionally, you know, I understand criticism is part of the job. I get that. I wish it wasn't, but I get it. Um, but last year seemed different. It affected her way more than me and other members of my family way more than me. Um, and I think that's natural. I think if someone talked about my family member, I'd be really mad too. Uh, so I was kind of like through the same, like, it's okay. Like, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I'm, I'm fine. Like, I'm, I'm in a good spot with my faith, my family and everything. And so uh, I'll be okay. But when they're upset, that makes you upset. And so, um, but, I, but, but I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, it brought us all together because we were able to, to kind of circle the wagons, if you will, and, and just come together. We collectively were being questioned. We individually were being questioned. Obviously, um, Ben being a significant part of that. If you want to defend your organization, you want to defend your quarterback. Um, but you're not winning those battles. You win those battles by, by getting back to business. And so I think more than anything, we we're all really excited about getting back to business. Getting on the field and getting between the lines kind of is a, a cure-all, if you will. You can get out there in, in the outside world and all the drama and media and all that stuff can kind of just disappear because you could be out there with your guys for one common goal and that's to win a football game. I think the whole team was ready to get back out there really because um, it wasn't just Ben that was getting attacked. The whole organization was, I think, that if anything, it brought them close together and they had something to prove. And I think everybody was really excited to go out there and prove people wrong, that they had the personnel to win, and Ben was prepared to lead that charge. I was excited for the season to start because you have a chance to get out and play football again. That's that's what it really is all about. Like I just love the game of football and love being out there with my guys and um, wanting to be out there with them. That start of training camp last year was probably one of the brightest training camps that I remember in a long time. Um, ben was just excited to be out there with his teammates and he was having fun playing football again, you know? Steelers wide receivers coach Daryl Drake passed away over the weekend at the age of 62. Do you remember where you were when you first got the news about Coach Drake? I was in my room at training camp, standing in the hallway um, when I got a call from Randy, our quarterback coach. And then he told me what had happened, and it, I remember just standing there like, "What? Like, and, and, and no, like that doesn't make sense." I just, just saw him like yesterday. I was just in such disbelief in, in that moment when he told me. Called Ashley right away. And that's when I broke, like I broke down. And when I picked up, um, it was quiet at first. And then I could quickly tell that he was crying and he was saying something, but I couldn't understand what he was trying to say. So you have that moment of panic, like what's going on? I don't even know if I get the words out really to tell her. And I think how it affected me was kind of how it affected the team. Like we all were just in shock at first. And then all of a sudden it just started hitting guys and some guys in different ways, like depending on your relationship, positions. Uh, I remember just being like this heavy, heavy cloud and blanket on everybody, just like, 
this can't be real. This can't, this can't be happening. Yeah, man, it, it, it was tough, man, uh, to lose a man like that. You know, not only a coach, but to be a, kind of like another mentor, father, pastor, like type of dude. Coach Jake was an unbelievable dude. Um, I, there's no words I can explain that what kind of man, what type of man he was. I just know that he's a loving man all the way around, um, which was a blessing, you know, to have in my life. And he taught me so much, you know. I and mean, when 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 Jake passed away, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal deal with. We had a group that was hurting because we lost a prominent figure, man, a guy that was a mentor to just about all of us, and just a quality guy in every way. What was your relationship? You know, we, we were only together for a couple years, and outside of probably Coach Randy, who I've been with for a long time, um, there's probably not too many that I would say that I had a, a closer relationship with. Um, because it was more than just football with he and I, we both enjoyed conversations about our faith. And I think that was one of the things that was, was hard on me, is finally felt like I had a, a brother in Christ in the coaching staff, and someone that like was a mentor type. Literally the night before, he passed. We had, um, Ben was home with the family and we were at his parents' farm. And he spent a significant part of the evening talking to his dad, bragging about Coach Drake and what a gift he was to that locker room and how much he appreciated their relationship. There's no doubt that God put him in my life for a reason. Uh, and, and so I would say I was blessed to, to know him even for a short period of time. We became really good friends. He saw the heart of not just Ben, but all of those guys. And he didn't just build football players, he built men. It was just disappointing for sure. And I'm sure being a player, um, it's all about winning, and so any loss is going to be disappointing. But um, that one had to be just an extra shot to the ego, you know? Uh, it was a difficult loss. It was tough. Like I said, that first game of the year, you want to get off to a good start. Uh, but you also know it's the first game of the season. And when you lose the first one, the, the only thing it really means is you're not going to go undefeated. And that's why I tried to let those guys know that, listen, don't get down the season. We have a long season ahead of us. And so um, be encouraged that we can come back next week and play. Roethlisberger's pass caught, and that's the first reception by a wide receiver today. It was um, it was first home game jitters. Uh, it wasn't like we came out on fire, but we were we were kind of doing enough. Um, not not as good as we always like to say as offense, but it's okay. It's the first game. You you know, if you look back at my kind of history in, in early games, like two kind of halves, right? First half, you're not playing well, let's bounce back in the second half and, and find a way to win the football game. Early on, it wasn't great, but we were doing okay. Our defense was keeping us in it. And then um, we got to towards the end of the first half and we kind of switched gears and went to a no huddle, kind of pick it up, um, offense, me calling a lot of the plays, Randy chiming in um, and doing some stuff with me. And, and, and we started to move the ball and things started really um, kind of churning for us. Before halftime, they got the ball again and I remember, I think they went into a no huddle and the energy started picking up and he started slinging the ball around a little bit more. And it didn't take many before he grabbed his arm. He knew something wasn't right. Well, I always had a little bit of pain just on, on, on a specific spot on my arm. Um, and that's why I always knew it was the same thing. Every time my arm hurt, it was one spot. and. Um, I remember one of the throws, um, I felt a different kind of pain. It was in the same spot, but it actually was like, it was shooting down my arm for the first time. Like I felt it going down my arm. And I remember thinking like, okay, like, like almost like something tore, like something tore, something went down my, and it was just, I remember Doc saying like, okay, it can't just tear off and like go all the way down to your hand. Like it just, it can't do that. But it just felt like this weird shooting pain now. I think honestly, at first when he grabbed his arm, it didn't make me worry that he actually injured his arm. To me, at first, it signified he's really hurting. And I think that made me sick to my stomach, really, because I knew he wasn't going to stop. 
I knew he was gonna keep going and I could see how bad it was hurting. So I threw a couple more passes and every pass it just kind of kept feeling, I kept feeling more and more going down my arm. And I just kind of kept going, like just thinking, okay, we'll get, when I get to the sideline after the series, I'll have Doc look at it. Like, you know, it is what it is, just more pain. And I threw a, I threw a deep ball um, down the right sideline, I think to Juju. And on that particular throw, um, was one of the most excruciating pains I'd felt. And I remember like so much, so I had to kind of grab my arm because it, it literally, it felt like I just, like, like something just ripped off my bone. My brother was texting me because he was at home watching it on TV and he was saying they're talking about his arm and um, I didn't know what was going on. You feel that pain, you walk off the sideline. First person Dr. Bradley, our, our team doctor, I told him what I was feeling and he kind of, you know, squeeze, made me squeeze his hand and do a couple little things. And I remember him telling me, Ben, I can't let you go back in the game. And I was like, what, what do you mean? Like he, I don't know that he's ever told me that. I said, Ben, you're not going back in. I'm, I'm, you're out of this game. And I never say that. I mean, he's, I mean, he's played in games where the Cincinnati game, he couldn't lift his arm over his head. He won a playoff game. It was halftime. My phone rang and my phone, he never calls me during halftime when he's playing. And so I think as soon as I saw the phone call, I realized that he wasn't gonna go back in the game. Um, and so that was tough for me because I'm like, well, what do you mean I can't go back in the game? He goes, I don't, I don't know what's going on in there and I don't like it. Um, and so I, I can't let you go back in. So right after the game, we went to go get an MRI immediately and we got the call from Dr. Bradley. I remember him just saying, I'm sorry, Ben, you, you ripped your flexors right off the bone. You have five flexor tendons that come from each finger that attach to one spot in your elbow. And so um, a long time ago, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 years ago, I got a real small tear in one of them. Um, and it was a, a vertical tear, so it was just real small, long ways in just one of those uh, <clears throat> flexor tendons. Not a big deal, dealt with it, and that's the kind of little pain I've had for the longest time. And this time, um, three of the five actually just came clean off the bone. And I couldn't really believe that. Um... We were standing in the laundry room upstairs, Ashley and I, and put him on speakerphone, and that's when he told us um, that He's like, I'm sorry, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you kind of have two options. You've evolved three of your flexor tendons. It looks like two of the other ones that look pretty good. Two of the other uh, muscles that are attached there look fine. Um, but the central portion's off, and you can't throw a football like that. You just can't, and you'll ruin your elbow if you do. Um, one, we can do absolutely nothing to your elbow, and you'll be just fine, but you'll never play football again in the NFL. But if you want to play, you're going to have to have surgery. And we've done surgery on him before, you know, but not like this, you know what I'm saying? This is on a thrower, his dominant arm. This is career threatening type of stuff. I told him that I was only gonna say this one time and I wanted him to hear me. And then I'm, mark my words, not gonna bring it up again. But if he felt content where he was with the career that he's had and it was on his heart to just be done. I would support him 100% in that, that he doesn't have to worry about my feelings and all of that. I want what he wants. And so I was basically just handing him permission to retire if that's where his heart was. And I was gonna support him in, in that. And he listened and you could tell he really took it to heart and thought. And he said, thank you, but I don't feel done. I'm not done.